Welcome to Living Life. May the Lord strengthen and encourage you through His Word today. When I was growing up and reading the Bible, every time I would come across a story about the Pharisees, I would tell myself, I don't ever want to become like the Pharisees. Never. One of the biggest complaints that Christians hear from non-believers is that we are like the Pharisees. We are hypocrites who think they are better than everyone else, and we have this air of self-righteousness. Sadly, this seems to be true in many cases. There are many times where Christians do act like Pharisees, where we see others as worse sinners than ourselves. We think we are better and more righteous than others. But by our words and our actions, we show that we are no better. We are hypocrites, that we are also wretched sinners. When we act like the Pharisees, it is a serious hindrance to sharing the good news and love of Jesus Christ. So through today's passage, we can see the danger of having this self-righteous and prideful mindset, and instead how we all need to be humble, have this air of humility, and realize how broken and sinful we are before God. So let's take a look at today's passage now. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 17. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Welcome back to Living Life. At the beginning of today's passage, we see Jesus tell a parable of two men who pray to God. One is a Pharisee and one was a tax collector. Back in those days, Pharisees were very well-respected teachers of the law and they were elevated in society. On the other hand, Tax collectors were among the most despised people in all of society. They were seen as traitors who betrayed their own people by serving the Roman Empire and collecting tax taxes. They were also greedy cheaters who charged more than what people owed so that they could fill their own pockets. So you have two polar opposites, one person who is respected and elevated in society and one who is despised and looked down upon in society. We see the stark contrast in the heart attitudes of the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee sees himself as holy and righteous before God. He praises his own good works. Oh, I fast twice a week. I tithe, I give offering. I'm so much better than this tax collector who is a horrible sinner. However, the tax collector, he knows he is a wretched sinner, so he cannot even lift his eyes to heaven, but instead he beats his breast and he asks God for mercy for being such a horrible sinner. Out of the two men, who was justified before God? Only one of them acknowledged their sinful nature and asked for mercy, and that was the tax collector. So he is the one who went home justified before God. We cannot save ourselves by our good works or legalisms. The Pharisee thought he could save himself by keeping the law that made him right before God. But no, that is not the, that is not the truth. 
In Romans chapter 3, verses 27 and 28, it says, Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. Only Jesus can save us. It doesn't matter how much you obey the law. Only through faith in Jesus, can we tr when we trust in Him as our Lord and Savior, can we enter God's kingdom. And because Jesus has saved us through His life and resurrection, we can now live a new life as new creations in Christ. The Pharisee was boasting in his own works, but he didn't recognize his need for God's grace and mercy. So he had a boastful and prideful heart. All of us need to have a humble heart like Jesus because we are wretched sinners. It is only through Jesus, only He can save us, only He can redeem us, and rescue us, and help us. As Jesus says, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Are all of you living a life of humility? Do your prayers reflect a humble heart like Jesus? In the second part of today's passage, it talks about people bringing their children to Jesus. They wanted Jesus to place his hands and bless them, the children. But the disciples scold these people and rebuked them because they felt that Jesus had more important things to do than to deal with children. However, Jesus says to let the children come to him for the kingdom of God belongs to them. Jesus loved little children. And he said that adults must receive his teaching and the good news with a childlike faith in order to be saved. Jesus wants us to be childlike, not childish. As you know, children are fully dependent on their parents. My baby daughter right now is five months old and she cannot do anything on her own. She is totally dependent on my wife and I to do everything. We have to feed her, change her diaper, bathe her, put her to sleep. There is nothing she can do. There is only one thing my baby daughter can do. That is, be cute. When she smiles and she coos, it's so cute and it makes my heart melt and smile. My baby girl, she completely trusts in us, her parents, to take care of her and to give her the best that we can do. We need, in the same way, I feel that is how God our Father sees us. He, we cannot do anything by ourselves, but yet He delights in us and He loves us so much when He looks upon us. We need to have complete faith and trust that just like a baby trusts in his or her parents, we need to have the same sort of trust and faith in God our Father. God wants us to depend on Him. He wants us to trust and have faith that He is a loving Father who wants the absolute best for his children, whom he loves and cares and cherishes so deeply. Through today's passage, we can see the importance of having a heart of humility before God. Instead of having the prideful heart like the Pharisee, we need to have the humble heart asking for God's mercy like the tax collector. We are all wretched sinners who cannot save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us. So instead of receiving God's wrath and punishment because of what Jesus has done on the cross for you and I, we receive God's grace, His mercy, and we can become His children. So all of us need to have a grateful and thankful heart because it is only because of Jesus that we can be right before God. We also see the need to receive the gospel with a childlike faith. And just like young children, we need to have complete trust and faith in our loving Father. Do you have that childlike faith in God the Father? If not, what is holding you back? What is preventing you from placing your faith and trust in Jesus? I want to encourage all of you today to take that step of having a heart of humility before God and also placing all your trust and confidence in Jesus. May we all have a childlike faith and trust in God to realize how weak we are, how much we need to depend on God, our loving Father. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for being such a loving Father. You care and cherish and treasure us so much as your precious children. 
We acknowledge that we cannot do anything apart from you. We need you so much, Lord. We need to depend on you. So may we come to you and recognize our need for you. May we continue to have a heart of humility, continue to repent of our sins and ask for your mercy and your grace. Apart from you, we can do nothing. In all things that we do, may we have that humble heart so that we can know, Lord, that it is only through you that we can have new life. It is only through you that we have all that we have in our lives. Thank you for your blessings that you continue to shower upon us each and every day. We thank you and we praise your name. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.